everyone, welcome back to Alt Baking Bootcamp, your crash course in healthier baking. With each episode, we'll recreate a classic dessert, but make it healthier without refined sugars, white flours, or dairy products. Today, we're tackling lemon bars. Here we have the original lemon bar recipe pretty good. It's important that we keep the sweetness and the tanginess of the lemon bar and have that kind of like soft custardy texture mm -hmm. with that shortbread on the bottom. So yeah, let's try these first and see what we can do. Okay, let's see. Definitely have a nice girth to them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They hold up well. They're pretty sweet, but they're nice and soft. The custard is nice, it's nice and thick. The shortbread layer is also a little, it's like a little wet. Mm -hmm. Like I would want more of a crusty yeah. feel. Yeah, yeah, something that, you know, it should hold up well, but it also should kind of feel like it breaks apart in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I think we can do better. Mm, I agree. So this recipe is great for anyone looking to cut back on sugar, grains, gluten, or anyone with a nut allergy or someone that's trying to avoid nuts. It's also super kid-friendly as well. So first thing is that we're going to line a baking dish with parchment paper. So as you can see here, there's two sheets of parchment, both in kind of a long rectangular strips. So whether you have the roll or you have the pre-cut sheets, you just wanna get them in roughly the width of your pan and lay them over each other. That way we can remove the lemon bar later without all that stickiness mm -hmm. on the edges. We're gonna add our wet ingredients into a mixing bowl, starting with one egg. And honey. We're also going to put in half a cup of coconut oil that is at room temperature, so it doesn't need to be melted. And we're gonna want some vanilla extract for some extra flavor. And we're gonna do the zest of one lemon. This is a microplane, it's wonderful for, for zesting. We're gonna do about one lemon here, which should be about a teaspoon. So I love using the zest of a lemon because you're gonna get different nutritional properties than you're gonna get from the juice. You wanna be careful just to get the yellow parts and not to zest the whiter parts of the lemon, which can be a bit bitter. So with the zest, you're gonna get some calcium and potassium in addition to vitamin C, which we'll also get from the juice. In this recipe, we also have honey and eggs, both of which are great emulsifiers. So together, we're hoping they'll contribute to that softness of the crust. All right, we're gonna mix this all together and then we'll prep our dry ingredients. Okay, this looks good. So now we're gonna mix together our dry ingredients. So we have two thirds of a cup of coconut flour. Coconut flour is really high in potassium, and although it has the word nut in it, it's actually not a tree nut. So it is suitable for most people with nut allergies. And then we have a quarter of a cup of tapioca flour. It's a great binder for gluten-free recipes like this one because the starch will activate at a high enough temperature and kind of hold everything together. And coconut flour alone is wonderful, but it can be a little bit cakey, which is not what we're looking for in this recipe. So the combination of these two flours creates a really wonderful consistency. Uh, so lastly, we're just gonna add a pinch of salt and we're gonna mix this up and incorporate it with our wet ingredients. Okay, so we're gonna mix this up, and just a warning, this dough is really crumbly, so don't be alarmed if you're making it and it's not coming together in a ball like some other doughs you may have made. Although this dough is pretty crumbly, you'll notice, sorry. <laughs> 
Although this dough is pretty crumbly, you'll notice that with the eggs, it'll set once you bake it. And because honey is a liquid sweetener, it's liquid at room temperature, it won't set so firmly that it feels like you're biting a biscuit. It'll kind of still have that soft texture that we're looking for. Also, since this recipe is served cold, the coconut oil will set after baking so that we can get really nice slices. You're gonna wanna make sure you have clean hands for this because I think the best way to work the dough is actually with the heel of your hand. So you're gonna wanna get it all the way to the edges like Jenny's doing in an even layer so that the dough will cook evenly and also so that we have the same proportion of crust to lemon filling in all the bars. So now we want the dough to set before we bake it. So we're gonna put it in the fridge for about 10 minutes, just to chill for a few minutes before we stick it in the oven, which is already preheated to 350 degrees. Perfect, so our dough has been chilling in the refrigerator for 10 minutes. And now we're gonna put it in the oven for another 10 to 12 minutes at 350 degrees. While the dough is cooking, we're gonna make our lemon filling. Yes, my favorite part. Yes, all right. We're going to add three eggs and then one egg yolk. Always living on the edge. No. Cracking your eggs straight into the bowl. So to remove the yolk of an egg, you can, this is the eggshell method. You can also do this between your hands if you want. Essentially, you're slowly getting rid of all of that white and you wanna keep the yolk intact so that it doesn't break and then spill everywhere. Then we have one third of a cup of honey. Honey is replacing the white sugar that you usually find in this recipe. Honey is twice as sweet as regular sugar. So when you're using it as a substitute, you wanna be aware and have the amount that you usually use. And then we're gonna do one tablespoon of coconut flour. Let's start mixing this all together. Coconut flour just helps thicken it up a bit. So this part of the recipe calls for about a tablespoon of lemon zest, which I'm gonna approximate as two decent sized lemons. Teamwork. <laughs> this certainly makes it easier than making it by yourself. That's true. I'd highly recommend having a helper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a big part of a lemon bar experience, I think, is smelling it first. Mm. So the lemon zest really helps with that. Let me get that zest in there. Now we're gonna juice the lemons. I have a lemon juicer, which just makes this whole experience a lot easier. <laughs> it's too large of a lemon for it's a lemon really juicer. big lemon. <laughs> Lemons are a great source of vitamin C, which is a wonderful antioxidant, and it's also excellent for your immune system. There's nothing worse than a pesky summer cold. I feel like it's really easy to get blindsided by those. So these lemon bars are good for that. We can just dump that in, and then we're gonna give it a good mix. We wanna make sure that the eggs are really broken up here because this is gonna be our filling. So we don't want there to be any streakiness or stringiness from the egg yolk and the egg white not being fully emulsified together. While Jenny finishes this, I'm gonna grab the crust from the oven because I think they're ready. So be careful because the crust is hot, but we're gonna wanna pour our filling directly on top of the hot crust. And as we're doing this, we're gonna lower the oven temperature to 325, and then we're gonna throw the whole thing back in for another 15 to 18 minutes or until the filling is set. So we baked our lemon bars with the filling for 15 to 18 minutes, and then we let them set for two hours in the fridge. You can leave these overnight or even for a day or two, but you want them to be cold before you cut into them. And now for the big reveal. Here we go. I wouldn't worry about the cracking of the filling because that's just natural and that, that's part of the look. Remember how we did our parchment paper in the beginning of this recipe? And that makes it so easy 
to just lift it out. Voila! So it's cutting really easily. As you can see, oh. this cut separated quite easily. I'm just gonna wipe my knife off each time so that I can get clean cuts. The edges really set very nicely mm -hmm. against the lemon bar, so you get a good chunk of lemon with the crust every time. So once these are cut, we're gonna finish them off with some shredded coconut. I'm gonna have a middle piece. I'm a middle piece person. Oh, I'm an end person. Perfect. Interesting. All right. Okay, so we're just gonna sprinkle this because we're not using powdered sugar like you would find in the classic recipe, but we still love the look of that. And we love just like a little extra texture and crunch from shredded coconut. So this is just unsweetened shredded coconut that you can get at any grocery store. If you wanna toast your shredded coconut, you can also do that. It gives it a little, you know, nice brown caramelization, adds a toasty note to your lemon bars. All right, should we try these? Yeah. Okay. You get your middle. Yeah, exactly. I'll so get my end. Go on first. Look at that, a really nice clean cut. There's a clear distinction between the lemon filling and the crust. I think I, think I do like triangles better. I know the triangles are cute. Not too sweet. Still really tangy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the crust has held together better, so it's not like kind of gummy and too wet. It just feels really bright because mm -hmm. of all the lemon zest. Thanks for watching All Baking Boot Camp. Let us know what you want us to make next time. Please comment below and subscribe to Well and Good's YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode of All Baking Boot Camp. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I really like them. Mm -hmm.